Hey everybody, Nick Pelletier here, and today we're going to be talking about our cooking system for car camping. So one of the most important things that you need to be thinking about when you are camping out in the wilderness or visiting national parks is what are you going to eat? But for the most part, unless you have some way to cook your food, the food isn't going to really be doing you any good. That is, of course, unless you're going to stick to eating trail mix, cold cereal, and raw meat. But for the rest of us that would like some warm meals from time to time, we're going to be talking about how we get that food from our containers into our stomach. And before we jump in, let's keep some things in mind. First is that what we're talking about here is for a family of five. And also keep in mind that we are car camping. That means that wherever we decide to go camp, whether it is out boondocking somewhere or in the national parks, we are going to have our car with our storage containers, our cooler, and our stove accessible right next to us. So the first thing that we're going to be talking about is our stove which is going to be our primary source of cooking our food so this is a Coleman stove I don't know exactly what the model is it's got two burners knobs are pretty simple it is run by a propane tank these propane tanks you can pretty much get them at nearly every single outdoor store including Walmart and they're not too expensive now one of these will last you anywhere from a day and a half to three days depending upon how much you're cooking and what you're cooking and for how many people but generally we find these last us anywhere from two to three days depending on what we're cooking if you are gonna cook you're probably going to need pots pans or something of that nature um, first thing we have here is a pot and for those of you who are just starting out you can definitely take things that you have from your kitchen with you they might not be the most compact they might not be the best quality but again if you're just starting out use whatever you've got we also have our cast iron pan and the reason why we use cast iron as much as possible is because it's extremely durable you can also put it right on top of a fire or embers outside and you'll probably never have to replace this unless you do something really stupid with it and so we also have this skillet Again, these things are pretty heavy. We had another skillet that was kind of a cheap version. We pretty much stopped using that because due to the fact that it was so much lighter, uh, it slid off of the actual stove. Whereas this, we can place it right onto the stove and it definitely stays there. And so when you're cooking eggs or bacon or whatever else you might be cooking at the time, this really is a good option. The other cool thing about this is you can flip it over and it's got this kind of grill set up where if you're cooking burgers or anything like that. So the next thing we want to talk about is our Stanley kettle slash percolator. It has a percolator inside for anybody who wants to make some coffee. So we use this basically to boil hot water for coffee or tea and it works out really good for us and it's very durable. Speaking of hot drinks, we definitely bring with us travel mugs. Um, we have these smaller ones for the kids and I definitely suggest getting mugs like this. I mean, these have the kind of protector tops for the kids. Now I wanna kind of make a comparison here real quick. This type of stuff is really popular. I forget the exact name for these things. They're enamel something or other, but they're like classics, right? Um, I can't stand them for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, they chip. I don't know if you can see this right here, but they start to chip away. Another thing to keep in mind with these types of cups and mugs is they don't stack very well. And that's a little bit more important with regards to when you start looking at an item for drinking cold drinks. That stacks really nice like these stainless steel cups. So instead of using those enamel cups, plates, and bowls, what we use are stainless steel, and they're a whole lot better. And again, they're not too big, and we kind of like that because it helps us to make sure that we're not just piling on tons of excess food. So we use these stainless steel cups. Again, one of the cool things about these is they stack extremely well as opposed to those enamel things, and they are also very, very durable. On top of that, they are about 16 ounces. So once you get your food cooked, you're definitely gonna need something to consume it with, and that's why we have sporks. Now, the cool thing about bringing sporks is that you're now, instead of having to bring a spoon and a fork, you basically just have one item. So this actually has a spoon side, it has a fork side, and it has a little serrated area here that you can use as a knife if you so choose to do that. And the cool thing about this specific brand is that they stack extremely well. And again, you're gonna hear us hark on this over and over again throughout our videos, is that you really wanna try and save as much space as possible because when you save space, it's going to allow you to 
have the ability to maneuver around a lot more easily as well as bring other things with you if you want to. In terms of big cooking utensils, we typically take with us a metal spatula, a spoon that doesn't have any gaps or holes in it, as well as a wooden spatula. We also normally bring a serrated knife with us and this, believe it or not, also packs very well inside of the spork bag. So it's not like you need any extra space for that. Another really important item that you wanna bring with you is some sort of oven mitt because you don't wanna be grabbing hot pots and pans again when you're out in the middle of the woods. And we do bring along with us some aluminum foil. This is good for wrapping up sandwiches. Sometimes we do use it to cook things over the fire. And we also bring with us a collapsible wash basin and this opens up, you gotta do it like this. And there you go. You have a basin now that you can put some water in to wash and clean off your dishes. And alongside of that, we also bring with us some cloths that we can use to either wash, wipe off, and or dry the different pots and pans or bowls and plates that we get dirty. So that's it. That's basically what we bring along with us. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're just starting out and trying to get yourself out into the great outdoors, I hope this was beneficial for you as a starting place for what types of equipment that you'll need to bring with you in order to start car camping out in the outdoors. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any comments or suggestions or other ideas about what people or even we ourselves might be able to use, please leave them down in the comment section below and we'll see you next time.